Jote Saint here. And this little intro is just for the notes I took about the troll belt tiller before I get actually into the demonstration of starting it and how it worked out in the end. Yeah, I wrote down some notes, uh, looked at some reviews online to see what other people had to say about the troll belt. I think it's TB225. The model I got was actually given to me by my dad. He had had it in storage for over a year because it wasn't heavy duty enough for the big garden that he works on, works in, that he, he uses a full size tiller to dig up his garden. Some of the little caveats, I did use old gas to try to start this thing. So when you see me trying to start it later on, I pull and pull and pull and pull and then finally it fired up, but it did fire up and it ran with gasoline that was about a year old, a gas and oil mixture that was about a year old. So I was kind of impressed with that. Uh, it was very easy to pull start. I guess it had some type of a, a, a gearing mechanism. It allows it to be easier to pull start. Uh, the throttle settings on the front of it took me a while to figure that out. I didn't didn't look up the manual, don't have a manual for it, so I just played around with it. It has three throttle settings on the front of it. it looks like there's a setting for having the, the gas valve all the way open, halfway closed, and then fully closed to shut the unit off. At least that's what I seem to, to experience with it. Uh, not really a choke setting on it. I just fiddled around with the settings to get where it would run the best when it was when the throttle was wide open. The soil it would, that I actually used it on was hard, hard packed soil that had never been had, had never been touched since the day that I bought the property 15 years ago. So I, it was pretty impressive how the tiller was able to to dig through the, the hard packed earth. It did take a lot longer than I expected. When you have a hard packed soil like this, this little tiller is not designed for hard packed soil and lots and lots of little roots in the ground. And I even hit one uh, one inch tree root, which if I would have taken my time and been more patient, I probably could have chewed through it eventually, but it was enough to stop the tiller blades from, from turning whenever I have too much pressure put on them when I was pressing down onto the blades to try, try to make it cut through the through the root. So this would be an excellent little tiller if you were to have like a, a piece of ground that was already been worked before. The soil wasn't, not necessarily loose, but it wasn't firm, hard packed like, like mine is. I want to have done more than about the 10 or 11 feet that I did, it took me about half an hour or so to thoroughly till that up to the point where I could dig out the soil and plant my plants. But if you had a, a small, like a, a little garden running across the front of your house or a small little patch of a garden in your, in your yard or just for flower, a flower patch, this would make an excellent tool for, for light work like that. Uh, it was very, very lightweight. It didn't take a whole lot of effort to manhandle. I mean, I could pick the whole thing up with one hand if I needed to. It probably didn't weigh 20 pounds total. So it was very lightweight, very easy to maneuver. So someone who doesn't have a whole lot of arm strength or upper body strength would, as long as they're going in a straight line or just going forwards and backwards, probably wouldn't have much trouble handling this unit. So see, this is a list of the top pros and cons I found online on Amazon. Uh, the pros were it was extremely lightweight that people claim they had no problems carrying it with one hand. With one hand, uh, it was very maneuverable. I mean, literally, it just you can just tilt it back and turn it. Uh, I wish the wheels were a little bit wider myself, a little bit bigger, because those little narrow wheels will sink into the dirt, dirt very easily. Uh, it was reasonable cost. I don't know how much my dad's cost, but they run a little over hundred dollars. It does have a four-cycle engine where you have to do a gas and oil mixture. Some people would prefer to have the gas in the gas tank and the oil in the oil reservoir, but this is more like a weed eater type engine, so you have to mix your gas and oil. It doesn't take up a whole store, a whole lot of storage room. I mean, literally, it fits in about the same, a little bit bigger area than what it would take to uh, pack away a, a large broom or a yard rake. So it's very small, very compact, very easy to handle. Uh, it, it is fairly quiet. It's just like a weed eater. It sounds like a weed eater. It's <laughs> so yeah. Uh, they say it was easy on their back. Uh, removable tines. I didn't take any of my tines off of mine, but there is a way to take off the tines so that you can use it. Use the tines only on one side and use the other side as a wheel with a with a, as a wheel the wheel and a guide so that you can do edging. Uh, see the cons. Uh, well, the, the cons are it's only made for lightweight use. Uh, if your if your soil is hard packed, it's going to take quite a bit of time. I do wish it would have had a little bit bigger gas tank on it. I think mine was like an 8-ounce gas tank. I wish it was closer to 16 ounces. I used the entire gas tank in the half hour or so that I was messing around with it, trying to start it, 
<laughs> chewing up ant beds and and digging through the dirt. Uh, the tilling width is fairly narrow, so you if you're going to be planting anything, you're probably going to to till up two two rows to have it wide enough to have enough loose soil on both sides to give you enough loose soil to to pack around the plants. Uh, and this one person said the bottom line was, uh, I wouldn't want to do a large garden with it. Uh, he said his is five by 15. My little patch was probably two foot, two, three foot wide by 11 feet or 10 feet. And he said five by 15 took him three hours to till, rake and plant. At the end of that time, I was still in pretty decent shape, pleasantly tired, but not beat up. <laughs> That's the way I felt when I was down with my little 11 feet of hard packed soil. So yeah. Uh, I would recommend the little tiller for lightweight jobs. I would not recommend it if you're a serious gardener who is, you know, going to be tilling up several hundred square feet of land because it's going to take a long, long time. It's not going to be hard to do or hard on your back or body, but those little tines will stop turning if they hit anything hard enough. So it's just like a weed eater head. It's going to, it's got a kind of a clutch mechanism in it that will stop the thing. The, uh, the motor will not stop, but the tines will stop turning. So yeah, this, uh, that's my uh, quick and dirty uh, review, if you like that part of it. If you care to stick around, you'll see the rest of it, and you'll see my adventures trying to start this thing, and on with the show. Well, I don't know how well that came out, or how loud this is right now, because I got the little sucker running. Oh, man. But uh, I didn't start out with any kind of manual or anything. My dad just gave me his old little toy-built tiller. I think it's Troy Belt. It's red like Troy Belt. And uh, I do things by trial and error most of the time with equipment, like gas powered equipment. So what I did was I tried the uh, what I thought was the choke setting on the side of the tiller. It, there's a number system called number one, two, and three. And a little diagram next to them that looks like a little valve. And I don't know if that's really a choke system or not, but I think it's more along the lines of a fuel control system. All the way down to the very bottom setting below one is off. It will kill the tiller. And so I just experimented. I, I uh, put it all the way up on three, kept cranking, nothing happened. Put it down to about two, and I finally got to crank, but it wouldn't stay running. Then I moved it down to all the way to zero, to well, to one, where you can feel it click at the bottom. And then I moved it up just a hair and started cranking and moved up a hair more and started cranking and then moved up another hair until I found just the right sweet spot where it would want to start and stay running. Uh, then I noticed the throttle control on the body of the... Oh, sorry. My hand's shaking. I'm so tired. I moved the uh, throttle control up to the... Well, let me start over. I saw the throttle control on the, on the motor itself, so I com opened the throttle completely up with my thumb and started cranking, trying to get it to crank, and finally... And I did it. Uh, this thing has been setting up probably for a year, so I can't really comment on the ease of starting because it ha it's not a brand new tiller. But it did start. I got it held the throttle wide open, and I had it set the 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 the, uh, the fuel valve or the, where the numbers one, two, and three are. I have it set to almost as closed completely, and that seems to be the sweet spot where this thing wants to start and idle, and will run the best when it's wide open. So, as you can hear, it's purring along happily now. Uh, I'm not sure how long it took me to get this thing to crank, but I'm sure the, uh, if I look back at the time on the, the first video of, of where I started, I can figure out how long it took me to, to get it cranked and going. So let's get out there and see how well it does as far as chopping up the yard. I'm going to try planting some watermelon plants and some black, black eggplant plants and one of the plant, which at the moment, I think it's yellow squash, but I'm not certain. I've forgotten. It's been sitting in my yard for two weeks now, and I've been keeping them, trying to keep them alive by watering them every couple days. And I think it's about time to put them in the ground before they die off completely and, not, and they go to waste. So let me sign out for the moment and get set up in the backyard and do some plowing. Quick tidbit: I did find a extra benefit of having this little tiller right off the bat as I was dragging it across the yard. It was it makes quick work of ant beds, and I've got some pretty big ant beds. So. Let me show you the before and after of attacking that bed with the Troy Belt Tiller.
There you go. So much for Mr. Ant Bed. Well, let's see. I'm going to pick this spot in my backyard. I got a little corner here. You can see how lush and green the grass is. And there's a little ditch you really can't see down there. It's not a big ditch, but it's a natural drainage area. So when I dig up this corner, it's going to have a lot of natural water, water supply. So that's how it's going to start out. See where it goes from here. Okay, guys. This is about, uh, I don't know, half an hour's worth of work. Uh, this thing actually, you can tell by how wide this row is, this is actually three passes. I started over here, made another one, then made another one, had to go back and forth, back and forth. It took so long because I don't believe this little Troy built is made for the kind of heavy duty ground I have this little patch of ground where actually you can see my whole yard which hasn't been mowed in about a month and a half see my blackberry bushes over there it's a pretty much a it's pretty much still a, a wild and woolly lot I never have developed the property you know as far as leveling all the ground so this piece of ground right here I know hasn't been dug into at all for since 1997 so 18 years but yeah about 18 18 years so you can see I was I'm satisfied with the job this little thing did I mean it did take a while but this thing this little tractor is not made to do the kind of heavy-duty tilling like a, a regular garden tiller is this is if you're I would say that if, if you have ground that is already soft and and doesn't require a whole lot of work to, to grind it up that this would grow great because as soon as I hit, well, as soon as I ground up enough dirt that it became soft and and not loose but just not hard packed because this stuff is hard packed. You can see, you can see all the roots that I had to go through. I even hit a, a one inch tree root, and this little tractor did a pretty good number on tearing it to pieces. It didn't go all the way through because I gave up. But you can see there, are just tons and tons and tons of bits of grass, heavy duty grass, thick roots that I had to chop through and actually I just kept going and kept going and kept going until the little tractor dug through it. Uh, it took probably 20 to 30 passes to get it to this point right here where I actually, let, I actually got the little tractor to dig a trench for me. I turned the tractor sideways and on its edge. I don't know if I can demonstrate it too well holding the camera but to make it dig the trench I actually put it on top of the soil like this, I turned it sideways like this, and actually got it up on one wheel and let all the tractor weight fall onto the fall onto the to the the blades and just kept it sideways. It does take a little bit of upper body strength to wrangle this thing. It's it's not very heavy, it's probably less than twenty pounds, but with those little wheels turning, you wouldn't want your grandma trying to do this. So I just kept going back and forth. To dig this little trench, it probably took me five to seven passes to get it to the four inch depth I wanted it. And I have all the soil pushed off to the side like I wanted. I'd like the tractor to do all the work. So this trench you see was dug and all the clearing was done completely with the little tractor. I haven't had to do any hand work yet. And this was kind of fun. <laughs> Even though it was a lot of work, I'm sweating like a pig. It's uh, about 87, uh, 78 degrees right now. Humidity is around 70%. So. It wasn't as, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do with this when I started it, but, or how long it was going to take or how hard it was going to be. So just one of those things where I just jumped off into it and said, let's try it out and see how it's going to work. And let me try to film it at the same time, see if I get any, if I do any good with this. So this video may or may not be any good, but it's my first attempt at outdoor filming of me gardening other than just filming my plants as they grow. So I'm hoping this is enough. This is probably... 10 to 11 feet of trench. I've got to put down six watermelon plants, two, two uh, black eggplants or purple eggplants. I'm not sure what they are. And then, and I think I have one or maybe two squash plants, yellow squash. So uh, you can't really see this. As I said before, this is a, up in here, this is a natural drainage area. So it runs off from all my neighbor's properties and goes down. I mean, you, all you see right now is trees, but it actually goes down another 100, 150 feet to the, to the to my nearest ditch, so I'm not going to have to water this a whole bunch. You can see how 
how fertile and hardy the grass is through here. This is the best patch of grass in my whole yard. And you see lots of dollar weeds. I hate these things, but they are a sign that there's plenty of water because with all the weeds, we will not come up in my yard unless there's plenty of water for them to feed off. So yeah, let me uh, pause this, go get my plants, and see if I can find my rake and shovel or something to cover them up. And I'm gonna walk over here to my blackberry bushes to see if there's anything good to eat this morning. It's about 9.43 in the morning. I think I started about 9.10, 9, 9 o'clock was when I got out there trying to uh, get the gasoline in it. Oh, and I would like to point out that I think that uh, if I would have had better gasoline, my gas and oil mixture is probably a year old. The stuff I used from my old, my old uh, weed eater that was left over. So take that to, into account when you're uh, when you're thinking about this review. So there's the final product: uh, two eggplants and six watermelon plants. I don't know where I got the idea from a squash plant. Why I thought I had squash plants, but no, it was all it was uh, two. It was four, four of one variety of watermelon and two of another variety to give me the six. And then the two little eggplants. So I uh, didn't really need my hoe after, after all. I had that little trench dug out. And I just kind of drug the dirt back around them. And, and firmly pressed the dirt around the, the, uh, the little planting soil that was surrounding the roots. Didn't press too hard, but just hard enough that it's firmly pressed around the plant so it won't fall over. And I don't know if you can tell, but the sky is the sky is getting kind of gray. We have like a 30% chance of showers today, so these little guys make a little bit of water. They're doing okay. They're looking pretty hardy. And we'll see how they're going to be doing in a week from now. So, yeah, it's been, it's been almost an hour since I started. Oh, uh, yeah, an hour. It's 10.07 now, started around 9. 15 minutes of that was just getting this little tiller to start up. But as I said, it was probably because the uh, gasoline was old. It was at least a year old, but it worked fine other than other than a little backfiring. There's a little tiller. I uh, just let it do its thing. I didn't try to press it too hard because it's like a weed eater head. These times will stop moving if they get into too much of a bind. And it won't kill the weed eater, or it won't kill the motor, but the tines will stop moving, so you can't put a whole lot of pressure on it. Just let it do its thing, and then put a little put a little bit of weight on it. Let the uh, basically I picked up the back wheels and let the weight of the motor press the blades into the ground. Uh, I actually wound up using this entire little tank of gas. It's probably less than a quart. I mean, uh, 16 ounces. But I wound up using every drop out of that to get it started and dig all this up. Yeah, let's see how it comes out from here. I uh, hope you found this little video useful, informative. Uh, I know a lot of people are are much more dedicated gardeners than me. I figure if I got to work too hard at this, then might as well just go buy the, the vegetables at the store. So these plants better be able to take care of themselves most of the time because I'm not going to be out here weeding this thing and fertilizing it every couple days they're gonna have to just do their own thing because after all they are plants they're made to grow so, and grow on their own without my help yeah yeah I'm not the dedicated gardener my dad is he loves to garden this to me is just uh who knows when I'll be able to get back out here and work on it again because my girlfriend's finding more and more stuff for me to do around her house so let me go go for now just let me wrap it up and I will try to get another update in about a week on this little garden and see how the plants are going. I would like to have a watermelon or two and a couple to give away. I do like I do like eggplant as long as they don't get too big and and they get, they get once they get too big they get bitter. But when they're young and sweet, I like them then. So yeah, this is Joe Saint signing out from VSG Land. And keep planting that garden.